Uh, I'm calling to order the, uh, the September 8th Appointments and Negotiations Committee meeting. Um, I'd like to take attendance if I could. So, uh, uh, Councillor Hayes. Here. Councillor Katarina. I think I'm here. <laughs> no, I'm here. <laughs> Councillor Hamill is here. Uh, so uh, I'm calling to order the... So I'm going to, uh, we don't have minutes available, but the next meeting we'll have the, uh, the July minutes as well as the minutes for, for this meeting. So um, we've got a couple of agenda items uh, this evening. Uh, we're gonna jump right into reviewing the, uh, the staffing opportunities. Um, we have not um, really uh, addressed this in quite some time. So, um, uh, this is something that uh, will we'll take a few minutes. I thought that, uh, Liam, if you could pull that up for us, um, you know, we will deal with that as a group. Thanks. Let me hear. Hang on a minute. Uh, All right. We're on seeing this. Great. Okay. So, and I thought, uh, Tony, maybe if you could uh, help us by leading, leading through this, that'd be very, very helpful. I know, uh, Tony, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of work that went into pulling this up. Uh, the, the caution that I want to just make at the outset is when we go through this, people may be alarmed at looking at all of the, the positions that expired in 2019. And you may recall that we, we talked to those folks and for those people that were currently enrolled, you know, all of them agreed to, to extend. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, what our plan is that we will likely, uh, confirm all of these and, and get those in front of the council to, to a point uh, in the next meeting or so. And then for the 2020 terms that are due to expire, we'll tee those up for the next council and expect that they will deal with them in probably December timing or January. So um, with that, Tony, why don't you walk us through and I thought we'd allow questions along the way if uh, everyone agrees. Okay, so you're looking at approving the 2019 that should have been, I mean, when we talked earlier, I thought we were going to, uh, maybe I misunderstood. I thought we were going to uh, look at waiting till after the elections and then um, well, making- Well, why, why don't we go through these and we can discuss okay. it with the group. The thought I okay. had sure. was that we, yeah. could, uh, we okay. can do it in any number of ways, but I thought if people have already signed on and are serving, have mm -hmm. served most, year for the ones that expired last calendar year you know they're probably good to go let's try to confirm them you know with sure. this council and then then for the ones that we do going forward but but let's discuss those as okay. we go and sure. there's one or two you know odd ones away but i encourage people to uh you know ask questions and raise your hand along the way but thanks tody uh so we did approve all the committees that needed to do we needed to do by statute like the board of assessment review um, we did, I believe, the Long Range Planning, the Zoning Board of Appeals, and the uh, Planning Board. Um, those all needed to have their committee members seated, and the the this committee made their recommendations to the council, and they did do that. So um, there are only two positions for this current year that are expiring. That's Alan Peoples and Chris Herrick. Again, I have a touch base with these individuals to see if they would uh, remain. Um, and I believe, uh, Tom, I may be mistaken, but I believe the Board of Assessment Review, or maybe it's the Zoning Board and the Planning Board that have term limits. They only can serve three, three year terms like the Council and the Board of Education. Um, the next on there is the Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee. Um, there are two positions whose terms uh, expired in 2019. Uh, Travis Turner did indicate that um, he would he was interested in, in staying at the time. And then uh, this year we have two uh, positions that will be expiring and that's Liam Erickson and Jeff Caldwell. Um, I'm not sure, uh, sure if Jeff will remain. He has some health issues so he may not want to remain on that committee. Um, again, I uh, this committee and the shellfish committee meet uh, the same night, an hour, uh, one meets the hour before the other. And I, I don't know if the committee is still looking, this committee is still looking at merging uh, them with the shellfish committee, a conservation committee. So um, that might be something that this committee wants to consider. And if they do do that, are we going to reduce the number of 
members for that one committee? Say we say the uh, Shellfish Harbor Conservation Commission or something. So we might want to take into consideration the reappointments to those two committees. Um, so we'll hold that thought and we'll come back to that, Tony. Thanks for calling it out at the end. We'll come back to that around okay. to that. I think there was a suggestion that one of the two seems to make sense if we were going to consolidate. So we could right. we could talk about that before we move off this agenda item. But okay. uh, thank you. Yeah, and then the uh, community services rec advisory. Uh, there were three positions that uh, the term expired in 2019, and all those in indicated all those members indicated that they wanted to remain. They would like to remain. And then this year we have two uh, two positions. Uh, one is a full voting member, and that's Leroy Crockett, and the other one is the first alternate of Tim Lindsay. Uh, the conservation commission. There are two positions that expired in 2019, Peter Slavinsky and Charlie Spangler. And they both uh, had indicated at the time that they'd like to remain. And, and what they had been meeting up until COVID, all these committees had been. And then there are three positions this year um, that are open, uh, two uh, Benjamin Keller and Susan Nixon, and then one vacancy that's a full voting member that would be um, available. And then historic preservation implementation. Uh, we had Becky Delaware and Will Rowan that their term expired in 2019. And um, at the time last year, they had indicated that they both wanted to remain. And this year, there are two positions. That's uh, Craig Frederick and uh, Jessica Holbrook. Uh, on the Housing Alliance, uh, there are two positions. Uh, it was that expired in 2019, and that was Brian Shumway, and then we had a vacancy. Um, and then there are two positions this year that will expire, Marge DeSanxis and Kimberly Fowler. I believe so, on this one, I believe there was discussion for Bill Donovan. Yes, I think that he, I actually I went back on the notes and we had actually, I think approved him in committee, but we never got that in front of the council to confirm. So okay. could we, did I have a, a motion to go ahead and, and do that? And I thought I'd follow on with, with Shumway. I would recommend that we, you know, that we uh, name him uh, to renew his, you know, uh, his commitment um, for the role that expired in 2019. Um, I move that we, um, appoint Bill Donovan to the Housing Alliance? Or what, okay, is that what it is? Yes, I'm <laughs> sorry. Okay. Do I have a second? Uh, I'm going to do a roll second. call. A second for discussion. Uh, okay, discussion? Yeah, I, I'm, so just a quick question I had, I think I may have missed it. Before the Housing Alliance, did we have who were the other, did we have any other candidates expressed interest in the housing lines? No. No, so no one else expressed an interest in being? And we, I know we did a couple turns on that too. I think we did have somebody else express an interest, but it was not specific to a committee. I think one of them w was uh, uh, Sh Cheryl LaRue and we promoted, we, uh, uh, she was uh, appointed to uh, the transportation committee. And I think the only other one was, was Dick LaRue, but he had not specified, uh, you know, a particular one. Um, I, thought, I thought Dick LaRue wanted um, planning. Uh, I thought that was his preference. Anyway, it wasn't housing alliance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, it probably was planning, Peter, now that you mention it. And I think that what we had done with planning, we had renewed the folks that wanted to uh, that wanted to extend rather than change out one of them. That's, I think, and I think we did that earlier in the year. Uh, so, yeah, but and, and we put Cheryl on uh, senior advisory. Right. Thank you. Thanks, mm -hmm. thanks, yeah. Jean Marie, for clarifying. So, any other discussion on Donovan to confirm as a member, a voting member um, on Housing Alliance? Nope. So I'm going to take a, a now a vote by roll call. So uh, all those in favor, uh, Peter? Yes. Jean Marie? Yes. And I vote in favor of that. So let's go ahead and get, get Bill appointed, uh, recommend appointment by the council at the next meeting. So what are um, we doing about Shumway? Same thing with Brian Shumway. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Uh, Brian served on the committee. You know, I met with him. Right. Uh, you know, he is 
president of a, of a company that's in the business of yes. uh, affordable and senior housing. Yeah. Uh, just Joe Wish Camper's uh, company. Yeah. So uh, I, I, you know, enthusiastically recommend him for consideration. Or yeah, be- I will make a motion that we reappoint Brian Shumway to the Housing Alliance. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, discussion? I agree with you, Don. I mean, he knows what he's talking about, so yeah. I think it's helpful yeah. on that committee. Okay, so we'll take a vote then. Uh, all those in favor, Peter Hayes. Yes. Jean-Marie Caterina. Yes. And I'm in favor as well. So let's get those yeah, those guys uh, okay. done and dusted there on uh, that committee. Go ahead, Tony. So the Long Range Planning Committee, I kind of got into a flow here and, and we did appoint Robin Saunders and uh, Dave Merrill on that board. So there's their terms are okay. okay. Um, the, there are two positions that are coming up and that's Rick Shanae and Alan Paul for the 2020 year. Okay. Uh, Parks and Conservation Land Board, there were two positions who expired in 2019. That was uh, Sue Foley Ferguson and Doug Williams and it's indicated they would like to have remained. And then this year, there are three positions that Sean Flaherty, Richard Murphy, and Jane Palmer. Um, Personal Appeals Board, um, there are two positions whose term expired, and that was Art Dillon and Penny Whitney Historian, and they had indicated that they would like to stay. Uh, this year, there's Jennifer Beatty and Emily Ward uh, that would like, uh, that, whose terms will be up, plus a second alternate position that, that is vacant. Uh, pest management for this year, there are two positions. That's Leroy Crockett, and he's a representative from the Community Services and Rec Advisory Board, and Richard Sullivan, who is the arbor- arborist and horticulturist that fills that slot. Uh, planning board, there are two positions for this year, and that's Roger Bealey and Richard DuPerry. Uh, senior Advisory Board, uh, there are three positions that uh, expired. Last year, it was Phil Christie, Jane Palmer, and Carol Rancourt. Uh, and then there's only one position that's um, a full voting member, and that's 2020. Cheryl, when she was appointed, she was appointed as an alternate. Uh, at some point, the committee could move her up to a, yeah. the full voting position, and that would leave um, the second alternate as a vacant position. Uh, okay. Senior, uh, I'm sorry. The oh, hey, uh, just one minute, Tony. I have one quick question. If you could roll, scroll back there a little bit, if I may. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dupier, I think, is an is an alternate. Is he or is he a full time member, Richard? No, he, um, you're right. Or? He is an alternate. He's the first okay. alternate. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So we're yeah. shellfish conservation. Uh, we had three positions in 2019, and that was Travis Turner and Terry Toomey and an alternate position, which had been filled, and the individual that held that resigned due to, um, actually, COVID in, his, in the economy. Uh, and then uh, both Mr. T- uh, Turner and uh, Mr. Toomey, uh, Toomey uh, indicated that they would like to remain on the committee. This year, there are three positions that are uh are up and that's Will Hamill, Nate Orff, and Andy Blanchard. And we have one alternate position that's vacant, as I indicated. Uh, the sustainability, just, go ahead. Oh, just a, can, can we, just a question on shellfish. Did we ever, <coughs> did we ever conclude that, I mean, at one point we were talking about, you know, consolidating groups and one we identified shellfish and harbor have almost all the same players, whether we could legally collapse that down into one group or whether we're required by state law that we have to have both of those. So, so just food for thought going forward, but that I thought that was one of the ones we thought we could maybe consolidate. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, that uh, good recall on that. And Tom, I, Tom, I recall that you seem to, mm-hmm. that one of the two had a, uh, a filing requirement uh, and that, that uh, and I, I seem to recall was shellfish, but I'm not certain rather than coastal. Waters, yeah, yeah. Coastal harbors is totally a local uh, prerogative, so there's yeah. no statutory reference or, or ne- necessity. Whereas shellfish, there is. So to answer Councilor Hayes' question, I I think there is a way to consolidate. Frankly, given the commonality and membership and purpose in, in many respects, I would strongly suggest that we fold the coastal waters into uh, shellfish conservation 
And I think we can do that if that's your desire. Mm -hmm. So let's have uh, some discussion around that. I'd like to explore that. Uh, you know, how does the how does the committee feel about uh, pursuing that? I, I, I think uh, before we do any staffing, it probably makes sense for us to cross the bridge about uh, deciding on consolidation. So, what are people's feelings? I mean, I from my perspective, after kind of sitting on both of those as liaison for a couple of years, I'm. Um, they really are a lot of the same players. The, the issues seem to overlap quite a bit. There are some differences, but there's some very common threats. And I think it would just be much more efficient for everybody's time. I, I would caution that I'm not sure that, you know, I think we need to have that conversation with both of those commissions because I think they would feel they're unique and different. But I, but I think it makes some sense, especially as we've had real difficulty keeping members in, in both of those groups. So there may be some efficiencies and there may be some real cross learnings. I mean, the issues just overlap. So I would, if, if it was politically viable and they thought it was a good idea, I would totally support you. Thanks, Peter. How, Jean Marie, how you feel about this? Um, I, I'm fine with folding them together. Um, I get what Peter's saying because people sometimes get on a different committees like this and then they feel an ownership so to speak um but i think if we were pretty clear as to how we wanted them to operate uh as i recall and this is a question for tom coastal waters and harbor committee was that formed around the building of the dock and some of that i mean that was before my time on the on the council am i right on that yeah. Well, it, it, the reconstituted version uh, was prompted by the actual conclusion of that project. We had okay. about $40,000 left over. Yeah. And so uh, th that committee was tasked with overseeing and recommending to council how to spend those monies in support yeah. of the working waterfront. I do recall, though, there was something that existed before it having to do with uh, mooring fields and such. Yeah. Um, Toady might recall better than I in that regard. I vaguely recall that myself. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm fine with putting them together. Um, so uh, I'll leave it at that. So could we ask for someone to perhaps just write up a, a recommendation on this, uh, you know, from a staff standpoint uh, of exploring the possibility of, uh, of consolidating them and that, you know, we, I'd be willing to commit. I'm, I'm the liaison for both of these committees. I'd be happy to make phone calls and and get input from from people on whether they think it's a good idea or not. Uh, I, my bias would be to uh, make sure we don't exclude anybody. I, I would make sure we don't you know eliminate anybody, right. you know, by the combination. Uh, but is that something, Tom? How would we go about doing that, Tom? Yeah, I can collaborate with staff and come forward with uh, with some talking points and, and uh, a recommendation that could be shared with each of the committees. I, I agree with your point that we ought to be delicate about the current appointees and really take advantage of some of these vacancies, if you will, yeah. and, and uh, do that consolidation coordinated through this reappointment process. Yep. Yep. And I know you've got two chairs, so you're going to go down to one, right? Travis is chair of shellfish and then uh, or Travis is on, uh, I think, Coastal Waters, and Nate is head of shellfish, so we've got to work through that that issue as well. But I, yeah, I appreciate your steer on that, Tom, and be happy to support. Uh, What's your expectation and timeline? That's my that's my real question. Well, what do you think? I mean, is this something we could do in a month or two, and we could come back with a recommendation before you know before election day? I mean, I think our we have two more meetings, and I think our November meeting is right before. It's on the Monday before election day. So, mm. you know, you can do it by then. Yep. Can I, can I make, I just want to add to make sure that we keep the, some emphasis on working waterfront too. Yeah. Because I think, I think having that verbiage in yeah. there is important, particularly if the state starts offering any funding in whatever. Yeah. Um, plus, I'm sorry, Katoti, go ahead. I was going to say, you could retitle it like the Shellfish Harbor Commission or something. Yeah, I mean, they but, have but, to, but even within the, you know, the, the body charge, itself, yeah. the charge of it, make sure you put those words working waterfront because mm -hmm. that is a very meaningful statement, I think, to the right. folks who work on the waterfront. So, right. 
So with that, do I have a motion um, to that effect so we can uh, uh, commission Tom and staff to help us with uh, uh, with a concept that we would then uh, uh, socialize with so the committee? Moved. So moved. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to make sure we, we don't you know run afoul of any regulatory issues. And I think, you know, Jean Marie's point is well taken. Peter's comments are good as well. But, uh, you know, we want to make sure we're not losing anything by, uh, you know, by pursuing what we think are apparent efficiencies. So, but uh, I'll take a vote then. Um, Councillor Hayes? Yes. Councillor Katarina? Yes. And I'm in favor of this as well. Thanks, so, Tony. Uh, sustainability Committee, uh, Deb McDonough, her term expired in 2019. Uh, there were two positions and um, the other individual, and I, I think it was Jane Palmer that resigned. Uh, Deb was interested in staying on. And then the two other positions is, um, one is a vacancy and the other one is um, Dr. Bedore. Uh, transportation committee there are two positions that were uh, expired in 2019 and that was Roger Bealey and Carol Rancourt um, and they both indicated that they would like to remain and then uh, this year there are three positions that's uh, Judy Roy and uh, Robert uh, Roger Chabot full voting members and Katie Fellows is the first alternate uh, then the zoning board of appeals we took care of that for the 2019 but uh, this year there are uh, Rudy Karen, Rudy Karen uh, is a full voting member uh, that is, his term is up and then the second alternate position is vacant. Okay. And then we have the uh, cable television. And I don't know what the committee is gonna do with that. I know that at one point they were talking about uh, merging it in with the um, community services and rec advisory board. So. Yeah, this is, I, I thought this was another one. We had had conversations about, do we really need a cable TV committee, especially since we can't get, you know, folks and they don't need. Um, so again, I, I don't know before we, we do much work is, yeah, I think Tony's suggestion or if that's a recollection of our conversation, but I think for staffing, we can figure out whether we really, what that committee does and whether it's worth, you know, worth mm -hmm. it up. And I, and I would wonder, and maybe the manager can answer this off the top of his head. I know we have these agreements with Spectrum or whomever it is, you know, as far as cable. And is there anything required under state or federal law that says you got to have some sort of a citizen committee? I'll confirm that. Uh, you're, you're correct, Councillor Katarina. The, the real charge for that group uh, focuses on kind of management of the franchise agreement, which I, I think is superfluous. Uh, yeah. It may be uh, helpful, if not required, in towns that lack kind of the professional administrative staff. Right. I don't think it serves any critical role. I've, I've read the franchise agreement. I think uh, myself and staff uh, are certainly capable of doing the, the administration of that, if you will. Um, this some new life was breathed into this conversation with former Councilor Babine. Some of you may remember he had a bit of a vision uh, different in terms of using it more for producing content and producing, you know, uh, information for SCTV and uh, worked hard to reconstitute the committee. To my knowledge, they never met and they certainly haven't met since he left. So uh, this is one that I would recommend you, we could do without entirely. Okay. Okay. So do we have a, is there an opportunity for us to, uh, you know, ask for Tom's help and staff again here with making a recommendation on this with, uh, you know, vetting it to some degree and then to seeing if this is something that we would, um, you know, recommend for consolidation. A consol you mean, are you talking about cable TV only? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, if the manager thinks we can do away with it, then let's do away with it. Uh, other discussion, Peter, how do you feel about that? You know, well, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's what I was, I was trying to say earlier, but if, if what you need is a motion to say uh, Tom's been tasked, so the motion could be that we task, you know, Tom or staff to come back with recommendations on both um, the coastal water and shellfish okay. and cable TV. Great. Bring it back with that recommendation and then this committee of 
you said a couple more meetings we could, we could report out, but that's, I assume right. it goes to the council. Right. Yeah, I could live with that. Mr. Okay, Chairman, so, perhaps right. I could suggest even a broader motion uh, that you could task me with coming back with recommendations only for yep. uh, potential consolidation of committees and or uh, removal. Yep. Great, Tom. Uh, so can I have that as a motion? So moved. Uh, second. All right, great. That was fast. Uh, <laughs> all those in favor, Peter Hayes. Yes. Jean Marie Katarina. Yes. And I'm in favor of that. Thanks, Tom, for the prompt. Okay. Uh, yep. Great. Um, so that's sort of, that's it, hey, Tony, for the worksheet. Yeah. Uh, I have a, Mr. Chair, I have a quick question. Yes. I'm a little confused, but imagine that. So the people whose terms are up in 2019, what are we doing with those? So they've already expired. So they agreed to serve on, to press on in role when we okay. canvass them. So my recommendation would be to confirm them um, for the remainder of their terms right. um, you know, that, that have expired. And that we would do that as this, we would do this as a, uh, as the current, appointments committee for the current council to decide before the, the election. And then the second part of this would be for us to make similar staffing recommendations, but for the count, the new council to decide and discuss, uh, you know, past election day. Uh, so do we want to move something out today? Uh, I'd say, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd like to recommend that we confirm the, the 2019ers, uh, you know, provided we'll make a sweep to make sure they're willing to serve the remainder of the terms. And we would get that in front of the council for two readings. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm fine with that. That's why I'm okay. asking. I just yeah. wanted yeah. to know if you yeah. wanted to get that done today yeah. or, or what, um, yeah. of course I, yeah. uh, if we I can, can't there's no, the, I can't see the whole list the way Liam has it yeah. presented there. But it seems to me that the people in 2019 who have agreed to remain, why don't yeah. we just keep them all? That was a thinking. And Tom, I saw you raised your hand there. Yeah. Thanks, you agree. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that's terrific to do it as one motion. Uh, I think it's clear, particularly for those that have previously expressed interest in being renewed. Yeah. The, the one, two exceptions I would say is I think we had a hold on coastal waters and yeah. shellfish until we have the consolidation right. decision. Right. And yes. then of course, uh, just previously this evening, you took action already on Housing Alliance. So I, I think right. that would be the only other exception. Yep. Right. So we would, uh, uh, I think we recommended to go ahead with Housing Alliance. So we'll do that as we had previously agreed. But for all others, uh, do I have a motion to the effect that Tom just, Tom and Jean yeah. just some? Yeah, I'll okay. make the motion. Um, I move that with the exception of Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee and the Shellfish, Con Shell I can't talk. Shell Fish Conservation Commission that all um, all members what do I call call members um, whose terms expire in 2019 who have indicated a willingness to remain uh, shall be extended for another term. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. Hey, just, second, just, Peter. Second, but discussion. Did you? Jimmer, I couldn't tell. Tom had suggested excluding the Housing Alliance. Was that in your motion? My only point was you've you've already made that uh, taking that action this right. evening. So do right. I need do we do so do we need to exclude that one too from my motion? Do I need to amend that motion? Uh, uh, it's sure. it's you, one half dozen of the other, I guess. Right? I mean, it just songs that we know yeah. we've, we we do yeah. those. Well, it will uh, be made. So do, does somebody want to make uh, one more one more try at just restating the restating the the proposed motion? Uh, I will. I'll try Thank you. again. <laughs> um, I move that, with the exception of shellfish and coastal waters, and what's the other one called Housing Alliance, mm -hmm. that um, all members whose terms expired in 2019 and have expressed a willingness to continue to serve 
have their terms extended. And thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. I think we jumped ahead with discussion first. So uh, <laughs> vote this thing. So uh, all those in favor, Jean Marie Katarina? Yes. Peter Hayes? Yes. And I'm in favor of that as well. So we get that teed up for and probably not tomorrow night, but I'd say the next one, the next meeting. Yeah, the next regularly scheduled one, uh, week Wednesday. Okay, Tony, thanks very much for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and everyone. So uh, the next agenda item uh, is, uh, one second. Uh, we had uh, one second. Uh, Liam, can you pull that up? Okay. Uh, the next agenda item is we. Um, was it must be a good time now, I think, for us to talk about the downtown district advisory committee charge. Uh, and I also have a timeline for that. Uh, does that seem like a good time to, to do that, everyone? Yeah, I, I would say because uh, I noticed Mr. Rizbar is in the audience. So why don't we? Okay. Pull that up in a second here. Mr. Chair? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah I, yeah, I think it's great to talk about what might be helpful because I just saw this, you know, just a little bit before this meeting. We've got lots of red and we've got some red that I think is a replacement language and we have some red that is crossed out. Okay. Just, just trying to get, I, so I just wanted to kind of understand the process. I think the red that might be crossed out is where this committee was the last time we reviewed it, but I'm not sure. So I'm just trying to figure out where were we versus where we are in this draft and what's changed between when we worked on it and where we are as presented here. Thanks, Peter. Good question. Tom, can you help us uh, with understanding uh, you know, yeah. where we are with the versions? Yeah, I thought you'd seen this language, but perhaps you hadn't. Uh, Peter, I believe you took the first crack at yeah, um, long, working long time ago. The, yeah. the community center. And so yeah. the, a lot of that strike through, if not all of it, uh, came from your initial work, frankly. It just didn't apply in this context. Um, I worked on that, that your draft further. And for yeah. instance, yeah. I've added these first three whereas clauses, shown okay. in new language. So Okay, so those three whereas are the new, are, are sort of new language. Yes. Okay. And I was trying to provide as, you know, as whereas clauses often do, kind of the background and context to why are we doing this in the first place. And so yeah. it's a recitation of the CEA and what the CEA talks about uh, in terms of, um, uh, in this respect. Um, so it's kind of build up to the, the purpose and the charge. Okay. I, I just have a couple of, my, my things are just wordsmithing stuff, basically. I didn't see anything with the way it's written, so. So may I, maybe I'll make a process suggestion. So Tom, maybe you can walk us through this and the, the, the committee, you know, could ask questions as we go, uh, you know, on the different uh, red line and, uh, and teal line uh, edits. And, um, you know, see if we can't get this in some shape to, to move forward tonight. Is that agreeable yeah, to everyone? Sure. Fair enough. So as I, um, I'm just refreshing my own memory, but these first three whereas clause, clauses, the new language really are pulled from the Crossroads Plan Development District, the zoning, if you will. Um, so again, they're just kind of background pieces. Uh, I'm pleased to speak about any of this. Uh, you know, you may think it's not necessary, but again, I was trying for the committee's purpose and the public to paint the backdrop. What What is this that we're talking about? So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, in large part, this language is lifted from the zone, zoning language. Great. And if it's helpful, I could put quotations to actually accentuate that. But uh, so I'm okay with uh, I'm yeah I'm yeah I don't feel the need for you to you know uh, quote sources here, Peter. How are you? How do you feel on that, Jean Marie? You're okay with it? Yeah, I just have a couple of English language. Okay. Thanks. Do you want to hear them or? Sure. 
Um, absolutely. And then I'd say, Peter, also, you know, same for you and, and all, everyone, uh, you know, additional content changes as well, if you have any. So go yeah. ahead. Thanks. Um, in the first paragraph in line one, uh, Crossword Holdings LLC is in the process, it should be of execution. Sure. Yep. A plan development, blah, blah, blah. And then in line, well, I've got line four, yeah, which starts conceptual master plan. Mm -hmm. I would strike which results in and just put the word resulting in, which results in resulting in a vibrant center. It just reads better. When I first read it, I'm going, it doesn't make sense, but maybe mm -hmm. I'm wrong. Uh, in the next sentence, I, you've, I would strike, now I can't even read what I struck here. Um, land development patterns. I would strike R also just land development patterns intended to promote. Yeah, like that. Cause then it will be a smoother transition right. sentence grammar wise. Thank you. That's that. Chair, I would recommend that uh, this whole conversation is more kind of a working conversation. No need for right. formal amendment right. or motions and such, just so we can. Right. Move and then it. do you want me to continue? There's just a couple more. And then I have a question. In the second, whereas that first line, I would strike um, the CPD, not strike this, the CPD continuous development standards strike of, and then put that require and strike the S. So does that make sense? And then my last question is in the last where is it says in the town is desirous of being involved. Are we desirous of being involved or are we required by the CEA and TIP? Hmm. I, I suppose. I mean, there was a desire that existed that's now, I guess, makes itself as a requirement. So uh, fair point. I mean, that was just my, my questionnaire and everything else. I just had a couple little things, nothing major. Well, I guess if uh, what I would say in response to that, so that whereas says we're desirous, the next one says, oh, and based on that desire, we've entered into a partnership yeah. that contemplates, uh, you know, the, the, maybe I can change that language if it. I mean, that to me, it wasn't so much the language, it was just what's the intent of the whereas, that's all. Do we need to be stronger? Or I, I also absolutely get what you're saying because then you lead into the whereas we ventured into. So I'm just opening that can of worms up, I guess. I'm open to suggestions. I was trying to give the background of zoning and then move into the more granular CEA language. Yeah, I don't uh, have strong feelings on the wording. Uh, Peter, uh, how about yourself? No, I don't. I don't have strong feelings either way. And I don't have a strong feeling on it either. So that's why I just brought it up, just to see if there's any desire to to move on. <laughs> is that easier to look at a clean version for you, or or is this helpful to focus your attention? Tom, I think it's okay if you walk us through it so we know where we are. I don't know how others feel, but I'm, I'm not troubled by the, the colors. I'm, just oh, I'm moving on to, uh, I guess, the next page okay. to the purpose section. Just a second. Peter, you had a question? Sorry, I thought we missed you there. Yeah, just, just a process question. I've got, I have some questions about the where as piece, but do you want to go through the whole document? No. First and then circle back for questions. No, let's, let's take them up as, as we're there. I think that's probably the easiest, Peter. Yep. So, so I guess my question, Tom, on the where is, and it's really the second where is clause, where as I, as I compare it, and this is where I get confused. When I, when I compare it to the language that was taken out, there seems to be a little bit of a difference in sort of the scopes. The way you change the language in the where is, is that they're going to they're going to consider common spaces where people can gather, meet, and cross paths, such as community green or common plaza, court, square, or variation of each. 
They shall be located at the core pedestrian realm of development, shall be an element of development streetscape. And so that's the language there, but the language that was taken out was much more specific about it being a core of commercial and mixed use buildings along with civic and residential buildings and public spaces that center along a main street and intersecting side streets to be incorporated into the approved master plan. The recreation and cultural needs of all demographics the town was pre previously explored and most recently was a common theme of the, so it, it just feels mm. like the scope changed because this is talking about, and I always thought when we talked about the downtown, we were talking about mixed use buildings that would have restaurants and other things on the first floor and maybe other types of arrangements upstairs. So I was just wondering, yeah. you know, the, the change in language and why, but I read the whereas that you've been here as much more about the outdoor spaces, you know, because the language you use is around paths and common greens and a plaza. Mm -hmm. Whereas I read the other intent that I thought came right out of some of the original documents. Yeah. So just curious. Yeah why and whether we should incorporate I like the way the old whereas read about what it might look like it doesn't have to be but so that was just sort of my thought I don't know how it was feel yeah I, I beg your pardon I've got a it's been months since I looked at it um, but you're right Peter the language that's stricken there is certainly not language that I created off the top of my head that is that reads very much like language lifted from the zone the zoning district um, well, I think, but, so, so I think my question, Tom, is the language that was lifted in the whereas clause that's been taken out, mm. lifted right from the original CEA document that talked about the downtown area, which, so there may be a difference between what was in the CEA document and what's in the zoning. Uh, well, can I ask uh, a question along this? Is this, this is just, this, is this the whole charge? or this is the beginning of the charge to the no, committee. Is, and then, the and charge. then, and then the CEA, they, cause it talks about the CEA, obviously they have to go to the CEA. No, I think this is, this is intended to be the charge, the okay. inclusive charge of this committee. Yeah, Peter, I'm looking at the CEA. The CEA is, is uh, doesn't include that language that's been stricken. So I'm Yeah, I remember that. I remember the CEA was pretty sparse. You know, it just said, do this. It didn't say what it would include. Uh, not much. This, yeah, but, and I can't remember. I'll have to go. But this yeah, I'll have to, too. But it, it's it's worded in such a way, Peter, that I suspect neither you nor I uh, you know, came up with that original language. That's, wasn't that's me. lifted from somewhere. <laughs> I've gotten pasted. Um, yeah, fair enough. But I think, but I think it's an important conversation for this group. I, I think there's a, you know, it doesn't preclude, right? You know, mm -hmm. but it's it's much more broad in the where is that it's really charging this committee to take a look at the whole feel of that limited downtown area, including, you know, the buildings, the public spaces, intersecting streets, and recreation and cultural needs. I mean, that's a pretty broad definition, which I think gives the committee a fair amount of creative license to take a look at what they think the downtown area should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, as I'm recalling here, I, I was being sensitive to the fact that the, regardless of this committee process and what happens, the developer is still going to have to meet our development standards in the zone. So I think for their purposes, I, I think it's important to make sure the committee is aware of that. And maybe it can be done by way of reference as opposed to recital, frankly. Could you do that there, Tom? Could you take that, uh, instead of putting the language back in, uh, you know, the purple language that's stricken there, uh, just make a reference to where that comes from or what, mm -hmm. where that could be found here? Sure. How, would, that, would that work for you? Yep. Just say, including but not limited to uh, the definition of the space as it currently is defined, uh, you know, X, Y, Z document. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll spend some more time with it. I've, I, again, I should have done a little more prep work for this meeting. I, I've just forgotten uh, some of my thinking. Well, I think that that language I'm referencing 
and I can go back and try to send it. Early on, you sent me a document as sort of a rough draft to work from, and that's just what I cut and pasted a lot of this stuff from that document you sent me originally. Interesting. So yeah, I'll, if you can if you can put your hands on that, that would save me yeah. some time, frankly, Peter. I'll, I'll I'll look for that. Okay, thank you. So we can reconcile that one, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah. Okay. Can we keep uh, pressing on that, Tom? So we've got a to do on that one. We're not yep. going to do this all in one. I think we'll probably do this offline to close out. But um, and just as a general construct, I'm I'm not a lawyer, and and it's important that the words uh, are accurate and convey the proper message. But uh, everything I've been taught is that the warehouse clauses don't really have a a uh, have a bearing. They're kind of build up in background and context. It's everything below now, therefore, be it resolved. Okay. It really is the the legal meat of things. Right. So the that, whereas stuff is aspirational. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that minimizing why, the importance of that. Yeah, and that's why I asked the question that I asked. You know, where, where is the charge? And to me, the charge is in that the resolution. Okay. This is what you're supposed to do, guys. So... Okay, so Tom's going to take another turn at uh, the feedback we gave him on the whereas section, and now we're down into the resolved. Um, uh, well, I actually don't have one more question on the whereas section. Go ahead. And it's really the whereas section that says pursuant to section 8.14. Yep. Um, and, I, and I think we'd had this conversation. I, I can't remember where we landed, but I thought what we decided might make sense is to talk about the town and the developer agrees to undertake a public process to define and refine the elements and costs of a downtown and just be silent on and to consider further financial partnerships as being mutually beneficial. I mean, it's, it's, it's stated in the CEA, you know, I just you know, this may build expectation that that's expected, but I, but I think it's really, so I thought we'd had a conversation in this group anyway about just being silent on that. And I don't know if that's still the feeling or not, but I guess my preference would be just to strike and to consider further, or just leave it as, and to consider further financial partnerships. Hey, Tom, question for you, if I following up on Peter's point, would that, that wouldn't preclude us from, doing those things right it just wouldn't specify it is that no i mean the ca is binding so yeah. um you know that additional ceas is certainly mentioned in fact okay. the final sentence is following the public process the parties may decide to commit to a new or amended credit enhancement agreement so i was just trying to mm -hmm. convey the message but uh I, the ca still controls that's, that's yeah. okay mr chair uh, I'm going I'm, I need to take a really quick t one minute. I got to call someone back. I've been trying to get a hold of him and he's trying to call me. It's one of my clients. I'll be right back. <laughs> Keep talking. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So I, this, uh, uh, su suggestion is to maybe just put a period at the end of cost of a downtown and, and drop okay. that additional language. Because I, my concern is again, this is this is going to be the document that we're giving as a charge to the advisory committee. You know, I just you know I don't think we want them necessarily doing the analysis of whether a financial partnership should include additional. So anyway, that's just my thought. So yeah, if we just end it downtown, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah, include us Peter, the only thing that it would, may make sense, and I appreciate your point, um, having served on the community center we asked them to do some things that were probably a bit more than we should have asked a citizens group to do. Uh, but by the same token, it may be important for this committee to say of the things that we're, we, we've agreed on, we think this is so important that this is something the council ought to consider. Then you can consider the viability and appropriateness and utility of a, a financial partnership. That's the yeah. council's call, but yeah. it may be helpful for the committee to indicate which ones of the things uh, they think are worthy of that consideration. I don't know. Did we have that in the charge for the community center, Tom, that language? The community center committee, do you remember? Where it uh, gave them a prompt as to what sort of things they might do. Because, I mean, they, they went on to recommend that we um, yeah. study further, um, uh, you know, the community center. 
right? Yeah. That wasn't had, merely within actually, the church. We had language that tasked them with making a recommendation, which the, it, ultimately they were uncomfortable with, and they kind yeah. of punted. Yeah. Well, this okay. Is, and to the to Peter's point, this starts to get into that kind of uncomfortable territory of spending money. Yeah. And, 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 and so I think it comes later will be in a comment. I, you know, I think what we might want to do is they do their work of figuring out what we want as a downtown area. But some of that financial analysis, we may want it to be done by, you know, someone that, that can make that financial determination, Tom, as you just suggested, what mm -hmm. does it make sense and where doesn't it make sense? And, this committee, especially as we have tasks, the skill sets may not have that expertise. So we can we can certainly strike the uh, the last part of that that whereas clause. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you. I love my clients. They don't listen or read the email saying I'm not available till after like quarter of six, but that's okay. <laughs> and again, on the whereas clause for me, do we need the one that says the town is interested in initiating the process of effort to fully explore this opportunity using the resources of the community? I mean, what's it, what's the, what's the, the resources meaning the, the people participating in the ad hoc charge? That's how I, that's what that's my intent yeah. was there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So if we could looking down at the purpose section. This is really, in my mind, the, the charge. Um, it is to uh, advise the council regarding the elements and costs of the downtown district. Okay. And to review and revise accordingly the master plan and CEAs may be necessary. So, Peter, that's kind of the same thought there that we just talked about. Yeah, but I. You know, I think I'm okay with it being rather than it being in the where is clause up the up front. I mean, I think this is reasonable in that context that that, that they would be doing that type of that work. If that makes sense. Yep. So I didn't object to it being there because okay. it as may be necessary is different. So. Yeah. And so then what follows there in the bullets is intended to be uh, kind of a general overview of the discussion points, expectations, and actual deliverables that we're looking for from the group. Yeah. So we would start with a review of the current development plans. Um, the Downs folks have done a fair amount of master planning already. And I, I was also thinking that they should also, um, you know, be aware of the requirements in the zoning district as part of that. The next would be the uh, schematic design and layout. Maybe that's the title. I think we stole that title from before. Maybe it needs to be reworded. But I think that the intent there was to be um, to, for the council to really appreciate kind of the, the, the layout and, and the final design that, that may come out of this process. Okay. And the last one, I really want to make sure we find a way to incorporate public involvement in. So all this other stuff was stricken. It was really unique to, and Don, you might recall, because I think you, we amended this uh, at the council meeting in large part the, for the community center group. So a lot of that language we just passed over uh, okay. came out of a lengthy council meeting discussion. Okay. And, and the, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Hey, Tom, so just go back a little bit about the, we did take out all the financial analyses and that sort of thing there. It was mainly focused on public involvement. Right, rather than this committee getting into, you know, doing, you know, right. scenario uh, planning and that sort of thing. Liam, could you just go to review and just hit um, no markup just for a minute? Just to, it's just easier, and then you can toggle right back.
Oh, um, this is okay. Tom, is that on a format? Uh, it's in Word, but you're in Docs. I see. Yeah. Yeah. At any rate, um, there's three bullets underneath purpose. Uh, re review of current development plans, schematic design and layout, and public involvement. It's just kind of hard in this view to see with all the strike through language. I see. But these are pretty technical financial things that you thought were more appropriately handled when they get further down the road on a specific plan. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. And, and I think Peter's point's well taken. We've the, the community center group, though, they did a lot of that financial work. Um, yeah. They really were uncomfortable with some of that in the end and, and a okay. couple making recommendations. So okay. uh, presumably the town and the developer would continue to work together very specifically on the financial components. Okay. But, but my point is we probably get that help somewhere else if we felt we needed it, not have it be part of the, the committee charge. Right. I think it's too much to ask of them. Yeah. I do. Okay. And Fair enough. Yeah. Very, very likely would need outside assistance, frankly. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Thank yep. you. Uh, Tom, quick question for you. Didn't we in the, in the community center one, we did build in some language about, if they ask for it, there could be outside financial resources or something? Yep, there's a provision later on about consulting support. Okay. Uh, number five, you'll see. So hold that thought, you'll see it. Okay, good, thank you. Thanks. Un under membership, I really followed, tried to follow fairly closely because uh, the community center process and product seemed to be really exemplary and we wanted to model that as best we could I did, and for dramatic purposes, I did add in uh, a recent change, which was uh, adding appointments from the developer side of the conversation formally onto the committee. Okay. So I'm looking at a committee of, uh, of 11 total, nine of which are voting, seven are residents at large, two are from the developer, and then there are two ex officio council members. Who don't vote. Right, they don't, don't vote. vote, but I would expect and hope have you know very active participation. So, okay. just a quick question: So, if the, if the town council members don't vote, should the do the develop the added two developer representatives vote? My suggestion is yes. I think you've got safeguards by by virtue of seven at large residents. Um, you know, I, I think it's important for them to be uh, kind of equal members, uh, so to speak. Can they also be residents, Tom? Can we stipulate that they would also be residents, the re developers reps? You can do whatever you like. Maybe this is a good time to get input from Rocky. I, mean, I, I don't know how the others feel while we're waiting. I'm happy to hear from Rocky or Peter. <laughs> Uh, Peter, and also Peter Hayes and Jean Marie. Yeah, I don't have a problem with developers. I think it's yeah. a good idea to have them in, and I don't have a problem with them voting either. It's interesting to ask if they also be Scarborough residents, but um, okay. you don't yeah. see it as a requirement. Yeah. As a practical matter, I think we've got the unique situation where they're likely to be residents. Frankly. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, but I, again, without I've not talked to Rocky or his team at all. Uh, they okay. may want one of their other staff members to represent their interests. Okay. So Rocky, I'll, I'm gonna allow you to talk. I haven't seen you raise your hand, but we'll give this a, give this a go. That work? Rocky, there? You on? I'm here. So Rocky, do you have any opinion around uh, this proposal? Uh, no, other than I think, you know, Dan's probably going to be involved. I mean, he's not a SCAPA resident, but probably knows more about SCAPA zoning than a bunch of us all put together. Um, so that, that's about all, all I can say. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking it's probably going to be Dan and I would be involved okay. uh, in this process. But you would be voting too. That's the, the big change here. So I'm guessing you're probably not opposed to that. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I haven't, I haven't thought it through. I mean, I don't, I don't see an issue with it really either way. Okay. Um, so I guess, I guess it works. You know, the, it strikes me and why I suggest they be voting 
a couple of reasons. One, you know, we do have this mutual obligation under the CEA, and I think it would be a fool's errand to go through this process and not come out with kind of common understanding and agreement. And I think having them voting and being a, a full member in all regards um, helps engender that level of participation. And so presumably we'll have at least a conceptual product. And, and I think we've been careful to the, speak of the deliver, deliverables more in conceptual terms than you know discrete financial terms. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe we should mention in here that uh, following this process, it's envisioned that there would be you know further further work to be done between directly between the town and the developer on the financial aspects. Okay. Just so everyone understands that. It's not this charge, uh, but it's expected uh, at some point. Yep. Yeah, I don't have a huge problem with it. I don't know, my, uh, Peter Hayes. Yeah, I I don't have a problem. You know, again, this is this is new since we talked about it last. Um, you know, I think it's fine having two developer representations on the committee so that they can answer questions and be a resource and influence the conversations. I think from an optics point of view, it gets a little problematic if you have two developers with votes, especially if they're gonna recommend a CEA as being an outcome of the process, which is what we've been talking about in a couple of the other points. I think that becomes, you know, I mean, that, that could be or is a conflict of interest. Uh, mm -hmm. So from a voting perspective, I have an issue, just like the two council members aren't gonna vote in committee here. Um, I would be much more comfortable um, with them. Absolutely no problem with being on the committee, but I do not think they should have a vote because they have a you know significant interest in how that develops where the community members on it don't. So that, yeah, I just think it creates some some issues for us from a, you know, with our with our constituents and those, you know, we all know where we are and different issues in town. So I would, that's where I am. I I, I think it's I think it, I think it will be a mistake to have them be voting members. I if I I would agree with Peter. The more I think about it, um, I think that um, I think it's great to have them on the committee. They'll have input there, but ultimately the vote will be from residents. So. Yeah, I share the view. I share the view that's been articulated. So uh, you know, get them on there, but I don't, don't think they should be voting. Yeah. Uh, so I, I would recommend what I'm hearing is a committee of 11 still, seven of which are voting members. Yeah, right. And the only voting members are residents at large. Yep. Yep. Okay. And so there's some changes to the paragraph below there that I'll make just with the membership size. Mm -hmm. I'll go back to seven. And I think there's another one later on under quorum. Okay. Okay. Uh, time frame is something we got to talk about. You know, I think April 1st, next spring, uh, probably is a bit aggress aggressive. Um, I guess I'm interested to hear from the developer's point of view, um, you know, what their timeline is. Yep. Brock, are you still there for us? I'm still here. Um, I really don't have a good feeling one way or another, whether April 1st is a, is a good, a good date. Um, it feels like we're, stepping on the throttle and then stepping on the brake off and on here. But I would think spring is, is probably right. Um, I don't know that it's April 1st, but it's, it, it feels about right spring. And, and you know, there's a wiggle room the, you know, right after that, it says in the event, the committee is unable to complete its task by the state, the council will consider reasonable extension. Yeah. I, you know, I think it's good to have expectations and if, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think Rocky. Some of the th feelings we had around timeline was that uh, you know we thought that the when the group was commissioned, sort of in uh, you know Q Q four 
late Q3 for the calendar year, that was great. But then, you know, really being pressed to come up with recommendations and a January timing was was tough. So it ended up being in the spring. So I think that was part of the reason why we pushed the maybe commission or form the committee in a similar timing as the community center committee, but give them, you know, give them a full quarter, you know, mm -hmm. full quarter. So that was the, that was the thinking. Yeah. I guess where I'd be is I just think our learning from the community center was we started in August and we got the final product in May, um, which would suggest a longer period too, but we're not factoring in this is the COVID world where, you know, probably a lot of these meetings are going to have to be virtual for a period of time. So I, I think April one's pretty aggressive. I don't know if we want to put May or June. Um, yeah. Again, you, you need to have enough time. So the volunteers we get to volunteer feel like they can do it without doing 20 hours a week to make it happen. Um, that's a good point. I can tell you um, because of the time frame and, and really the scope and workload, the community center group was meeting weekly and it was uh, really too much to ask for a citizens group. Yeah. Frankly. I, I would say, why don't we go with June in part because the town council will be dealing with budget yeah, in April right. and May anyway. So yes. let's give them till June 1st. Yeah. Yeah. Peter jogged my memory. I had intended to, but it doesn't look like, like it made it in. Maybe under paragraph nine, when we get to it under meetings and records, um, I just want to make sure we give some reference to um, COVID and, and whatever, just that this committee must abide by all you know existing um, regulations or restrictions related to public public meetings and such. That makes sense. Okay. Well, we'll take that up when we get there. So I'm hearing time frame to switch uh, to April, uh, June one. Yep. Staff resources. Um, I'm offering up myself to serve as support. Um, and then uh, anticipating that the town engineer, planning director, and sustainability coordinator may or may not be part of it. I don't think it's essential to list. No. The fact is, we're we're going to be here to support the effort, whatever it requires. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that needs to be stipulated. Yeah. Okay. And then the consulting support. Um, you know, this is a bit different. Um, so I, it may well be that we need some outside support. I don't think we have funding in the budget for it necessarily, but I think it's important to tell the committee that you're not on an island all to yourself. Um, we'll know a lot more about that when the committee members are appointed and you appreciate their skills and talents, frankly. But I wouldn't be surprised if some sort of uh, outside consultant might be helpful here. Well, I was gonna ask if we did have any money anywhere um, anticipating that I agree that, I mean, it, the, the other committee needed some money. Uh, I can't imagine this one won't, but we can deal with it when the time comes, I guess. Well, it came up somewhat in the budget discussions, Peter, I think, and just in the context of all the other challenges we had and priorities we had, it, it didn't make the grade. Um, I'm not sure who brought it forward, but I know it came up at some point of the yeah. budget sessions. Yeah. Well, the good the good news is if there does become some unanticipated COVID monies that do flow our way from state federal resources, um, that could be a pool of resources that you know will free up budget dollars because the COVID dollars can. Yep. I mean, you've got some of that already, but that. So. Yep. So I think it's important to send a good, strong message that to the committee that you're not alone. Come back yeah. to us if you need help, yeah. and we'll yeah. consider what we need. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I agree. And then the rest of these uh, are really just kind of boilerplate, just making sure that they have proper construction as a committee and, and leadership, if you will, clarify the voting. Um, 
So I guess five is still relevant, right? Yeah. Uh, four actually would be a quorum of seven, wouldn't it? Yes. So that, that could move back to four members. Okay. And then we want to make sure they have good records, obviously. Yeah. And if you don't mind, I will try to work into this language um, some reference to COVID. Okay. Uh, a question, Tom or Don, on number ten meeting records. Is it is it technically a public meeting that they should be? You know, especially if they're using Zoom, which is easy to record. Should it be? You know, should it be a, a public? meeting that people can access and review if they're not in attendance? Yeah. If we want centers, to... We're all noticed and, and open to the public. But I mean, the other, but the others we didn't do because it was cut or... So anyway, I don't know if it's worth putting in here that, you know, Zoom meetings will be made available for the community to participate or, you know, observe. Well, aren't all meetings other than executive sessions open to the public? Well, they are, but I think, you know, you know, if they meet at three in the afternoon and a lot of our public can't be there, we yeah. do recorded sessions so people can look at them in the evening or other things. And that's usually a technological challenge because we don't have all the rooms with recording stuff. But if it's a Zoom meeting, it's really right to record. And oh, OK, yeah, I get it. No, I mean, I love seeing more Zoom than not just for that very reason. So. So I, I can add a requirement that uh, all meetings will be considered public meetings with proper notice uh, and public comment will be afforded. Yeah, great. And That's good catch. Zoom, and Zoom recordings will be made available if, if appropriate, whatever the word, or, you know, because there's no yeah. reason for Zoom not to be made available. I understand, you know, we don't have, equipment in all the rooms they may be meeting in, but if it's Zoom, it's easy enough. Yep. Fair enough. Yep. Yeah, this says that they'll keep minutes and that they'll submit them to the clerk. So the Zoom record uh, recording would, would serve a similar purpose. Yep. Okay. I, what I envision is to build a, a, a web page on our website for this project, if you will. And so that sort of material can be housed in, in at that location. So folks can kind of one-stop shopping. Great. Tom, what's thought. your feeling on turnaround? Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, Tom. I can, I'd rather jump right on this while I'm thinking of it. Uh, I've yeah. got the TIF policy to get out by the end of the week, uh, but certainly I can have this. Do, do you recall the timeline that you and I and, and Paul floated uh, with respect to bringing this to council? Yeah, I just reworked it. Uh, and if you give me a second, I could pull it up in my file here. Um, but I, I just redid it. I sent it around in the materials. Link, do you have a copy of that? Could you pop it up? I don't know what, um, I thought we had said uh, end of the year for commissioning the, the, this committee. It was like December. Um, but I thought that we had a, a, and I don't know if my timeline drives to the new June one. John, you want me yeah. to try to pull that up? Could you, could you just quick, quick? Uh, it may be obsolete, but at least it's for discussion purposes, so we can confirm. Sure. And then we only have one other, one more agenda item that would be pretty pretty quick. So I know we've been running over here. So, but thanks everybody's extra time and effort. Yeah, I'm looking at it, Don. You had September 9th, which would be tomorrow. Uh, Mine was pretty ambitious, I think, in terms of getting it in front of the council to approve yeah. the charge. But the actual, yeah, I don't know uh, what I said on there. Maybe it was in a moment of weakness, but well, that's that's aggressive that we're going to do it tomorrow. Yeah. I don't think I can okay, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. Uh, so, so the eighth is yeah. right now. The 19th is just saying that the Downs did their workshop then. Right. So punch it out to the net. Could you do it uh, like a uh, week next Wednesday? The next meeting would be 16th. Does this committee want to see it again before it goes? I, I would recommend you do that. 
Could we uh, can we see it and just uh, give edits offline? We we'll have to meet again to go through it. Sure. So let's do that if we could. So you plan on getting it on the 16th agenda? Yeah. Um, and we would do we would just review edits. You know, your edited version from tonight between now and then. Well, and that means um, that means I have to get it done by the end of the week, right? So yeah, again, I don't want to be crazy here, but uh, and I could even go the first, you know, first meeting in October if you wanted to give yourself more time. Yeah, if I, we I, could look for October two as the target to bring it to council. Yeah, I would give me time. Go ahead, Kevin. Sorry, Liam. Go ahead. You had something. Uh, is it is uh, the next council the first one in October? October seven. Oh, is it? I yes, that's what I meant. The first meeting in October. Okay, thank you. You're doing yeah, real time edits here, right, Liam? Thanks. Thank you. And yeah, it makes sense too, Don, because I think I think yeah. based on what Paul was saying, the 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 meeting next week is a pretty full agenda. I think. Yeah, I'm sure. There's, there's yeah. some meaty items on there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And this assures that this sitting council is the one that will launch it. Then there'll be a a process of uh, advertising for appointees, uh, interviewing and making those selections. Yep. Hopefully it doesn't take to the end of December, but right. you know, yeah. Um, it'll take but it's out the so. shoot, right? It's uh, yeah, down the ways here. Okay. Yeah, that, that works good. I can turn right. that around Thanks. and I'll circulate it for comment. And if, if right. needed, you can get back together formally. If not, if we can do it kind of online or offline, that would be even better. Right. right. Thank you. So we've got that as an action item. I don't know that we have to take a vote on it, but is everyone on the committee okay with that? Peter and Jean-Marie? Yeah, okay I'm good. That's good. Great. Good. Excellent. So, thank you for the input. Thank you. Thanks very much, Tom and Peter yep. and everybody for the, the detailed discussion and comment. Uh, final issue. I'll be very brief on this. Liam, could you just pull up that one PowerPoint slide? It, it's just basically, this is the one having to do with uh, reminding ourselves we're you know, going to be coming up on another performance review cycle, you know, that starts in December, but we actually start circulating the stuff, you know, prior to that. I think we announced this the first, you know, meeting um, uh, in December with the council, but we'll be following this same process and timeline, just change you know, the numbers uh, to 2021, uh, respectively. Uh, the only reason I brought this up is that uh, we currently... Uh, use a pretty detailed evaluation instrument that's focused primarily on competencies. I wanted to see if there was interest in energy and the part of the council to try to uh, simplify uh, a performance evaluation tool that would, you know, continue to use the competency-based uh, factors in some fashion, but allow us to put in the goals work that we, you know, um, uh, ob obligated to do uh, in our discussions and the update of the of of uh, Tom's revised EA. So, you know, I, I had in mind a one or two pager. This is something I thought that perhaps Liam and I could work on with input from the committee and we'd just try to, you know, do a turn on that and Tom get your input and see if it's something you'd be comfortable with us, you know, using, um, you know, as an, as an instrument. That's, that's all that was about. So the comments and feedback are welcome. As, as long as I don't have to do it, Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take that as a yes. Uh, others, Peter, Tom? Yeah, the instrument that you've been using is generally the one I use uh, for my senior staff, and there's nothing magical about it. No, yeah. you're right. It does focus predominantly on, on competencies. Um, I'm certainly not opposed in concept to having a, a, a goal component of that, a piece of that. I think it needs to be given the language of the employment agreement. Great. I guess I just asked to be a do this in collaboration. I'd like to absolutely, Tom. We would look forward to doing that. Yeah. Um, Liam, any comment on that? Any thoughts? Uh, no, I'm I'm happy if if the uh, if the objective is to find something a little bit more straightforward and and not simplistic but uh, efficient, I guess. And, and yeah. through that, I'm happy to see yeah. what's out there for examples to to draw Great. from, or we can just work off what we got and see if we can uh, simplify. I think if I if, and again, Tom would would know better than I, but I believe that the current form draws on five or six sort of concepts 
Yeah. Uh, and so certainly yep. that would be a starting point to reduce the, those, uh, the details. Right. So why don't we, why don't we commit to look through our respective bag of tricks here, uh, see what we can come up with. You know, I have some stuff in mind, but it's something I'm envisioning something that would capture everything that we do and, you know, draw it all down for, you know, uh, for the council to, you know, review ultimately an executive session and then to share with Tom. But I think we're, you know, on a path here that, uh, you know, uh, a, a simplified tool, more streamlined one might facilitate our work together on that. Peter, any comments? You've probably have seen these in other places. I know they're not, you know, very common in the public sector, but any other thoughts or comments on that? No, I mean, other than, I mean, totally open to exploring something that's easier and manageable and has takeaway information. I, one thing I did like about the old is just the continuity of being able to, you know, there was a way that that all aggregated up to a score, if you right. will. It kind right. of from one year to the next that, Yes, the council changed, but you could see progress along certain things. So certainly whatever instrument we use, if there's a way that, you know, I think you and Paul have outlined goals and those are embedded in, but anything simpler is great. But I do like the ability to benchmark over time to say, you know, where is the directory of performance and what it's been and why. So great. that's embedded in it, that's good, but I'm sure Liam's seen a bunch of tools and probably has some great suggestions for us. Great. Thanks very much. Appreciate the feedback. We'll take that, you know, as you've offered it. Uh, and I don't see a need for us to vote on this, but as a discussion item primarily, uh, we'll look uh, hopefully to come back with something. Uh, Liam, what I'd say is maybe we, you know, get something roughed up, but plan on coming back uh, no later than the November, you know, the November meeting. Uh, so we have something uh, to hopefully to formalize then. Okay. Good. okay, so I don't know if there are any other comments or questions, but uh, thanks everybody for uh, a robust and very efficient meeting. I appreciate everybody who sent attention. Mr. Chairman, a thought just came to my mind only because a staff member mentioned it. Uh, back on the downtown advisory committee. Yes. Uh, you know, we do have a, a downtown plan. That was something we did as part of the TIF, you might recall. Yep, And that involves kind of a much larger geographic area, including Oak Hill. So is there, I guess the, the concern or the question was, will that confuse people when we say downtown? We're really talking about the, the Downs property specific here. So I, I don't have a good answer. I just throw it out there, maybe food for thought. Um, is there another way to title this so we're very clear about it, what it is? Yeah, that's a great point, Tom. I, I agree with you that you know, the use of the term downtown, it's the downtown TIF, the downtown district, they're two different things. Uh, yeah, easily confused, and but they're related, but they're separate. So uh, yeah, I'm open to, uh, you know, naming conventions, you know, and suggestions. I don't well, know if the suggestion was Downs, just put an S, Downstown. <laughs> with a little trademark a little tm next to that yeah. <laughs> so give some thought to it if there's just, i just want absolute clarity what this is okay good uh let's let's noodle on that and come back okay. uh you know I, I might uh need some refreshments to help me with that at this hour so uh, <laughs> <laughs> so any uh with that i would entertain a i'd be very happy to entertain a, a motion to adjourn so moved Second. Do I have a second? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, Councillor Hayes. Yes. Great job, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Katarina. Yes. Thanks, everybody. And I am also in favor of of closing. Thanks, everybody, uh, yeah. for getting back on track with stuff and uh, you know all the good work here. Thanks. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. you.